Hi guys, I just thought I'd use this video to talk a little bit more about virtual machines. I'm, I'll try and talk about a few things that I haven't covered in previous videos on them. So, um, as you can see, I've got Windows XP running in a virtual machine using InnoTech VirtualBox. I've explained how to set up uh, Ubuntu, so it's worth doing that because you can download Ubuntu for free and you can download VirtualBox for free. Uh, just go into my previous videos. I'm not going to provide any downloads uh, links in this one because they're all in my previous videos. Um, I've done it several times. So um, this is a virtual machine. Again, it's a PC inside a PC, um, which is great because then you can do things like testing, uh, find out if applications work, install applications without uh, worrying about having a virus because if a virus gets put inside this virtual machine, it won't affect your computer unless you've somehow put it into a shared folder because you can actually share your files with this operating system you just enable a shared folder put it on your desktop and then share it and then you can map a drive to it and if you want to know how to do that then I'll make another video on it but um, as you can see we're running Windows XP inside a virtual machine now one feature I like about this virtual box is the seamless mode now unfortunately installing Ubuntu and things like that uh, seamless mode doesn't seem to work but it does work on Windows versions well. I've tried XP and Vista and they've both worked in this seamless mode. Now what I think it is is that um, VirtualBox is, I don't, I'm not sure if it's more wayward towards Linux but um, I've seen a lot of uh, videos and a lot of, um, a lot of content on VirtualBox running on Linux because obviously Linux users might want to virtualize the XP system and run that so the seamless mode seems to run like that for Windows so they can then have their start bar in Linux or whatever. So um, I've got XP here, I'm just going to run it in uh, seamless mode just to show you how it works. So um, with this host thing, you've got all these host things down here, at the moment my host is set to the right control which you can change down here. So I'm just going to go to seamless mode, I say the virtual machine will now be switched to seamless mode, yes ok, switch. And straight away, if I move Camp Studio out of the way, I now have a second start bar um, on my machine. Now obviously, because uh, I've got a custom smaller start bar, uh, this is actually supposed to lock itself to the start bar at the bottom, but because I've got a smaller one, I've got a little gap there. Um, well, that's what I assume anyway. So, um, as you can see, uh, it's still got my de original desktop, it's got my documents and all this. Um, it just has a second start bar on here, and this is running in the virtual machine. I can just go to start my computer, and it's loading up just like a normal window would. So, um, it's great to do this because your applications are then integrated uh, into the operating system you're using and um, if you're using applications inside a virtual machine it won't affect your operating system so again useful for testing and you don't have to run the virtual machine inside a box you can have it look like it's native um, but obviously you have your second start menu so um, that is a useful feature really um, if you are running other operating systems or if you for example if I want to try out Vista and I don't want to keep it in a box so I want to have it um, full screen or without going to full screen um, I can then do that and also that means I can switch between applications I have open and, and the applications that are on the virtual machine so uh, just a useful feature really and um, another thing is that people have been um, saying about if I uh, right control on L if I say um, some people have been asking me about um, certain things not running about it saying um, that regardless of them changing the virtual memory uh, the virtual video memory um, that hasn't made any difference now I don't think it would uh, because they have their own special adapter and if you haven't installed the um, guest editions uh, which I, I think on Ubuntu some people are complaining uh, which um, the guest editions only I think does the mouse thing so you can move in and out with it not affecting anything um, I think regardless of uh, is how much memory you give it it's still using its graphics adapter which is I think equal to VGA or something like that you don't get much memory with it so I wouldn't expect to run full scale games on things like this because it's using like a default thing that VirtualBox have made inside it's not actually using your video card it's a virtual video card so um, I'm not sure about um, things like DirectX support or um, 3D flipping and all that stuff so um, I don't think it supports Aero either so um, that's that's that point. Now the next one is another feature I like about VirtualBox, um, which is um, also essential for testing, is that you can make snapshots. Now, well, I'm actually going to make a snapshot because I've had a request from some YouTube um, users, which I'll go into in a second. And um, basically, you can take a snapshot of your virtual machine, and what it does is it it pretty much freezes it, and all it does is it will save the state that it's in, regardless of what you're doing on it. It will save it. 
So I'm just going to say snapshot one, clean install, no apps. Click OK. It says save in the execution state, and it it will just save exactly what it what it's like. And then you can, um, if I was to make any changes now, um, if I was to I don't know. Uh, do anything, rename the recycle bin or something. I could then go back into the main box of um, here and it says snapshots one, it says current state changed. I can just right click and say revert to current snapshot, but I'd, obviously because it's on now, I won't be able to do that. But I can just revert to the current snapshot. So you can make as many snapshots as your hard disk will allow you to have, um, which is ideal because you can switch back at any point to whatever you do. So it's great for testing. And um, some people have asked me. Um, where I've got xp.iso. Now that's actually made from a physical disk that I've got which I've actually gone out of bought so I haven't pirated anything there. It's an actual physical CD um, of Windows XP Service Pack 2 which is what I've installed on this virtual machine. So um, obviously I'm sure you can find your own little routes to find XP um, and a CD image of XP if you really want one. So um, the next thing to do is answer the question that I've been asked uh, a couple of times on my channel. I just go into my videos. Uh, I've been asked, uh, Hayes Duncan, this is from VeggieXD, it says, Hayes Duncan, I was wondering if you could try this. In a virtual machine with XP or Vista, go to the main drive, right click on Windows, click delete, then click OK, so we can see what happens. OK, well, um, I'm not sure what you're expecting to happen. I don't think, I don't, I'm not sure if you're expecting some genie to pop out of the virtual machine and then tell me that I'm a retard or something, because, um, there's something called Windows File Protection, and uh, it keeps all the important files in its uh, DLL cache folder, and it will just restore them. But um, I, I very much doubt it will work as you think it will. Um, but I can try, I'll run it from within Windows, because even though the Windows are going to be in, in use, and because I've made this snapshot, it doesn't matter. So um, I can revert back to the snapshot if I delete the Windows folder. But this is what happens when you delete the Windows folder, because I'm sure no one would dare do that on their machine. You're sharing C Windows as admin. Uh, are you sure want to delete it? Yes. Windows is a Windows system folder and is required for Windows to run properly. It cannot be deleted. So XP stops you from deleting the Windows folder. So uh, that's what you, <laughs> that's to answer your question. Now, if you would want me to uh, delete the Windows directory from the entire virtual machine, um, as in, I don't know, log on a live Linux disk and then delete the Windows directory, all that would happen is I'd get something called a it will say um, Windows file not found, and it will say hal.dll or ntldr is missing. That's one of the common things that it gets if it can't find the system files to start up. But that's what would happen if I deleted the Windows um, folder. So I don't know if you expected anything special to happen, uh, but it won't let you delete it. So, And even if it did, you either get a blue screen or an error on startup. So, uh, okay then, well. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, if you want to know that's what happens so that's just a little bit more of an explanation on virtual machines if there's anything else you want to know uh, write a comment and I'll try my best to answer it if I know the answer to it and I'm sure uh, one of my viewers will also answer if they know so thanks for watching my video um, please comment rate subscribe if you like my videos and thanks again